President Biden getting slammed over a split screen moment. As Americans in Ohio say they are getting sick from toxic chemicals, the president was thousands of miles away in Poland to give a speech and vow unending support for Ukraine. Our support for Ukraine will not waver. NATO will not be divided and we will not tire. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia. Never. One year after the bombs began to fall, Russian tanks rolled into Ukraine. Ukraine is still independent and free. Oh, man. But Biden's foreign trip isn't sitting well with the mayor of East Palestine. That was the biggest slap in the face. That tells you right now he doesn't care about us. So Agreed. Uh, he can send every agency he wants to. But uh, I found that out this morning in one of the briefings that he was in the Ukraine giving millions of dollars away to people over there, not to us. And I'm furious. Mayor Pete says he will finally visit Ohio's toxic train site, but only when the time is right. Oh, and boasts that his experience as mayor has prepared him for this moment. I am planning to go, and uh, our folks were on the ground from the first hours. Look, I was mayor of my hometown for eight years. We dealt with a lot of disasters, natural and human. And one of the things I noticed very quickly is that there's two kinds of people who show up when you have that kind of disaster experience. People who are there because they have a specific job to do and are there to get something done, and people who are there to look good and have their picture taken. When I go, it will be about action on rail safety. <laughs> That's amazing. And 18 days after the crash, the EPA taking charge of the cleanup and ordering the rail company to pay for it, the agency's chief made another visit to the site and sipped the water. We, uh, I'll tell you, we believe in science, so we don't feel like we're being your guinea pig, but we don't mind proving to you that we believe the water. Okay. Here's Thank to you. Caroline. I appreciate that. Here's to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hmm. Services for those three gentlemen will be held in a week. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. They're fine. They're fine. Piers, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great yes. to be back. It's great to have you back. What do you make of this split screen moment? I know this is an e this is kind of an easy talking point. You can always look at something that's hmm. going on in a, in a foreign capacity. And go. Why isn't he doing this? What do you make of this? Sincerely, I, I think you can actually split your view. I think that I would have a strong view that it was correct for President Biden to go to Ukraine. And it was a bold move, and it was a two fingers up at Putin this week in the first anniversary week, and I think he was right to do that. But I think what's been going on uh, down in East Palestine is absolutely extraordinary, and Mayor Pete seems completely deluded. Mm -hmm. This guy keeps saying, I'm planning to go. It's been three weeks. Yep. What are you planning? You get on a flight. I can only liken it. If there was a train derailment in the UK, for example, and the Transport Secretary, whose specific brief was train mm -hmm. incidents, did not go for 18, 19 days to the scene, they would be fired. They'd be gone. They'd be torched uh, because everybody would think that was outrageous. He, he seems to think that the longer he leaves it, the better he looks. Mm -hmm. I've, got a, I've got a little wake-up call for you, Mayor Pete. The longer you leave it, the worse it looks, buddy. Get your ass down there now because he's so wrong about what he said. Actually, it's really important when public figures go to these scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, I can always remember on 9-11 when President Bush went down there mm -hmm. very, very soon and stood there. He wasn't meeting the criteria that Mayor Pete has laid down. Exactly. Right? He was just doing a photo op. But what a powerful photo op. And when he spoke to the world, the world knew the president was taking this incredibly seriously. And that's the point. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love the criteria, though. I, we should all be doing that. You know what? I would, I would go get groceries, but uh, I'm going to go when we need them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go to the store just for some lousy symbolic gesture. It's very galling. I have a few <laughs> things to say. So this is the same crowd that continues to this day mm -hmm. to criticize George W. Bush for flying over Hurricane Katrina. And even, like, you could say, you could make all those arguments, like, well, it was really busy and you couldn't get down there in the time and you didn't want to take away resources. You make all those arguments. But regardless, they still make fun of him for that. This is 18 days after the fact. At this point, you might as well not go. Mm -hmm. And for the president of the United States, it was his instincts weren't telling him, I need to go immediately. His instincts didn't tell him, I need to go before I go to Ukraine. His instincts didn't say, I need to at least tell them I'm going to be there after my trip to Poland. 
so that they would know that I'm going to be there. I'm intending to go. And he never called a cabinet meeting. He never said, Mayor Pete, get your butt over there. Mm -hmm. He never said the vice president, when you're finished in Munich, can you please head over to East Palestine? We need them to know that they have support. They never talked. He didn't do any of that. And do you think about the other things that they care about? You know when they care about something. How many events did they do after Georgia passed their law on oh uh, remember Jim Crow 2.0? Yes. The, everybody, the entire yeah, we're cabinet. We're so, so down here in the, Georgia. Yeah, the entire <laughs> cabinet was on high alert. That, yeah. that, that was the most important issue that the, you had to go and do. The president's instincts were wrong on this. It would have been easy for him to say, I'm going on Saturday or I'm going on Sunday or I'm going to at least let them know afterwards. He didn't do any of that. So he is, I think, rightly getting the criticism. I don't think it's wrong for him to go to Ukraine. I think that's fine, great. And it makes sense because he was already going to be in Poland. But that his instincts didn't tell him and his heart didn't tell him, I should go see these people first. Yeah. He deserves it. What do you think, Joey? What do you think about this year anniversary? How do you feel about the war going so far? Yeah, you know, I, I love the optics of President Biden walking, strolling down the streets. The sirens went off that hadn't gone off in a few weeks. Uh, we know they called Russia to let them know he was going to be there. So those were legitimate sirens. Uh, of course they were. They're, certainly they were under aerial attack. And, uh, you know, he puts his aviators on and he can't be harmed. Uh, one thing President Biden, the Democrats, and even Republicans that are associated with the swamp need to understand is that Americans of all walks of life, they're growing even more weary of what we would call a war. Mm -hmm. uh, sold on the stump speech. And that's what that was today. That's what that was in Poland. It, this is not an indictment on us helping Ukraine. I, I don't have the information to have an educated opinion on that. But this is a war sold to us on a stump speech, and I've just happened to fight two of those myself, and I left, you know, probably the least impressive parts of me over there with <laughs> one of them. But when you move, when you pivot this conversation to Ohio, where's the trust, the leadership, the explanation of this that creates an understanding that allows us to say this community is safe. Well, you know, maybe Buttigieg being in D.C., I don't know if this train was headed west. Maybe he's looking at the root of the problem. Mm. Maybe that, maybe he's pulling <laughs> the, the administrative uh, action uh, or what this administration does. He, maybe he's looking for the root of the problem. But those people in that town don't care. They don't care about excuses. Is he waiting 18 mm. days because he's not sure if he can breathe the air? Yeah. You know, that's the kind of rumor that comes from this. Isn't case. Trump going tomorrow? I yes. that, that, that you think would get them to go. I mean, if that, if that doesn't get you <laughs> yeah. on a plane, yes. Donald Trump down there, mm. right, grandstanding, if that doesn't make Mayor B go on the next plane, there's <laughs> but, something wrong with him. No, but, you know, he's above that. He won't get, you know, he won't count. He's only going to go for the right reasons, Judge. <laughs> and he's going to tell us what the right <laughs> reasons are soon, I'm sure. <laughs> so why does the president of the United States visit Ukraine on President's Day? Imagine that you're sitting in Palestine, Ohio. Imagine you're afraid to drink the water, take a bath, wash your kids. You're worried about breathing the air. You've got all kinds of problems. And the president hasn't visited. And FEMA has refused aid. The secretary of transportation only mentioned it after he was embarrassed into it and mentions it in a tweet. But imagine sitting there as the president of the United States tells people in Ukraine, we are with you until the end. If you're sitting in Palestine, Ohio, you're saying to yourself, is he with these foreigners until the end? Imagine sitting there. You can't get anything, but he gives a half a billion dollars to Ukraine. And when does the money end to Ukraine? We've given them $113 billion, and the U.K. has given them, I think it's $8 billion. What's and up with that, Piers? Yeah, Sorry, the, we give them more you know, than any other European. I, 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 and the European, I couldn't resist. The European Union. Leave us alone, Gunnar. <laughs> well, maybe they're Europe, smarter than we are. Okay, maybe Europe, that's what it is. But hang on. You can't just raise a hand, right? About you hang on. You don't want to win. No, you hang you on. I'm not Putin answering. To win, right? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Wait. What? EU gives $40 billion. <laughs> At some point, we've got to say, when is enough? When is the off-ramp? And imagine listening to a president, now that the EPA is deciding they're coming out, the EPA is like the fox watching the hen house. So our issue is, look, I've given money to Ukraine. It's not that I have a problem with it. My problem is, why are we treating American citizens like this? Why do we leave American citizens in Afghanistan? Why do we allow American mm. citizens to be overrun at the southern border? I could go on and on. Why do we allow the Chinese to, to, to hover over our intercontinental ballistic missile sites? And now all of a sudden, he's on a world stage ranting. Next thing you know, Putin comes out and he says, he says, well, now I'm out of the nuclear treaty. I mean, things are ramping up. For what reason? 
Well, because a dictator invaded a sovereign democratic country and he needs to be beaten. That's yeah. the reason. How many years do we stay there? Well, until the Ukrainians get the job done, because it seems yeah. to me they're, they're prevailing a lot longer than anybody thought. But, the, right? but we, all, we know the ugly reality. The moment we pull the money out, they're dust. If America so we're stuck, pulls this over, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We're, but we're stuck with this forever. So we have no choice. This is basically what we've done is we've bought a money pit. We bought a vacation home that we're never going to see. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And it's going to be rubble. Well, you can it's see. It's going to be rubble. Because I would throw back at you that it's freedom and democracy is what you're seeing, and they're invisible things, right? But mm -hmm. they are incredibly important. But we yeah. don't have it in this country. Well, there we are lots of things in this country which are wrong, as there are yeah, in the I, UK, right? I'm sorry, right? but that, that, argument, they, they that argument was for Iraq. Country. That argument was for Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And look where both of them are now and where we are now. Yeah. So I, I, right. I, at I least show a strategy. Yeah, but, but ultimately, I remember the first Gulf War, for example, where America didn't hesitate to go in and get rid of Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. And that was for the right reasons. It was an attack on freedom and, and it was defended, right? And I remember that was the operation, right? And so I just think sometimes you have to remember what is the fight actually about? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.